James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, it happens to be Saturday afternoon, September the 20th, 2014. How about that? What do you do? Yeah, the, this time the official first day of autumn is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. It's next week. It's the 23rd. It's not the 22nd, the first day of autumn. Usually... Usually it's the 22nd, but it's... Uh, it's already the 20th, so it's three days away. The, the Tuesday. The official first day of autumn. Tuesday. I love autumns. It's my favorite time of year. The, the beautiful foliage, the different colors. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Anyway. Those different colors are for dying things. Things are dying. The leaves are dying. The, the yeah. chlorophyll is not pumping anymore into the leaf. Yeah. They just happen to croak in different shades. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, some are bright yellow, some are orange, some Much are like a pepper red. grows in different shades. Well, peppers... Green, red, yellow, you know, yellow, orange, uh, and red. It goes from green to uh, to well the peppers that are meant to be red go from start off being green then turn uh, orange and then turn red but the there are peppers that just go from green to yellow mm -hmm. and then there are believe it or not I had peppers that turned a uh, dark purple are you sure green is dark the first purple stage? yes or the last stage. first stage so that would be the younger ones. Yeah, you know, pick them when they're young. But when they're when they're when you end up with the bright yellow or the red pepper, I'm not just saying chili peppers, hot peppers. I'm saying ah, regular peppers, sweet peppers, regular peppers, sweet. The uh, all of a sudden the pepper becomes very high in vitamin C and beta carotene. Ah, when they get colored, yeah. yeah. That's why I I wait for my peppers to reach maturity and color because this is a decent amount of natural beta carotene and vitamin C in a red pepper. Nice. It's very good. Them. Anyway, welcome everyone to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I am your host James P. Madonna of Megalife 21 and I would like to introduce right now my illustrious co-host and mentor uh, the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Good. It's good to hear. Good. Okay. I don't have a hell of a lot to say, but um, um, you know what I, I, I heard that the um, the uh, the parents of the first person, the uh, uh, um, the, the American journalist that was Foley. Be, that was beheaded, James Foley, that was beheaded by ISIS. The parents came forth and said that the United States government told them to stand down and do not threaten them. Threaten them for, of prosecution. Do not pay the ransom for their son. It's it's illegal for whatever reason. Well, I didn't see. Uh, uh, SEAL Team 6 rescuing him, you know, I mean, like, they lost their son in a very horrible way. But, so, she was told, they were told, not to raise the money and pay the ransom. I just thought I'd, I'd start to show off with that. Um, Andrew Cuomo, who is the... Oh, gee. Who is the, uh, Democrat, um... Uh, governor of New York State seems to be backing a Republican. Now, I didn't have time to read the entire article, but doesn't this remind you of today's sellout, blue dog, conservative, corporatist Democrats? Bipartisan. Bipartisan. He, yes, part you know what that part means. Part of his. Uh, 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 ad 
for his running for the second term is that he brought violent partisan to New York. You know what that means? The people will end up losing. People always lose. Because Republicans do not compromise. There is no true bipartisanship with Republicans. So the people will lose. In other words, what he's really saying is, you know, like Hillary Clinton is supporting the evil Monsanto. Okay. Mm -hmm. What he's really saying is, yeah, I'm a Democrat. I'm a nice guy. I'm a little compassionate, but I'm more compassionate towards money than I am towards the, the people that vote for me. You see how many... I'm uh, a little more partial of money. You see how many Republicans are in the Obama administration? Same thing. Bipartisanship. Hey, was it, wasn't Nancy Pelosi saying that constantly when she was uh, Speaker well, of the House? She was always trying it, yes. Kiss, kiss. Kissy, kissy ass with the Republicans. Please like me. Oh, please approve of us. Let's well, be she friends. Sounded like a Republican when she said, "Well, we have to pass the bill to know what's in it." Anybody ever hear of reading it first? What's the, what was that old song from the seventies? Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Why can't? We? Listen, <laughs> people did not get sick and tired of business as usual and vote Democrat for compromising with the Republicans. That's not why people elected Barack Obama. That's not why people elect any Democrat. We don't want to be friends with them because we don't want to compromise. We want a change, a, a complete overhaul for the better. Not business as usual. And that's what a compromise is. Well, under these circumstances, now if you we're talking about Teddy Roosevelt's type of republicanism, or Dwight D. Eisenhower, that, or uh, even uh, 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 Abraham Lincoln, well then, you know, that's work different. together, compromise. That's different, yeah. because these people were very progressive republicans. Yeah. You know, so they, they are capable of compromising with a democrat. Hmm. I mean, real compromise, but not the Republicans of, of today. today. Yeah. Well, I'd like to start off by saying hello, giving my sincere greetings to, first of all, my a very near, dear, and close friend, uh, Miho from Osaka, Japan. I say hello to you and your aunt. Hi. From, uh, where the hell are, oh, from Bergen County, New Jersey. Greetings, Miho and your aunt. Tell her I said hello. Hi. Yes, that means yes. I think it I means yes. I don't know. Yes. It's used a lot. Yeah, it, I think it, I means. I think it's something like aloha. Yeah, I think Ka Miko, not Miho, but Miko, is or Mika or Mi Miko is cat in Japanese. Um, that's yeah. a, that's about all I know, and I know the food. Yeah. But, yes, Miho. And I would like to also say hello to my a good friend, trainer, uh, a, per, a personal uh, a trainer extraordinaire of alternative fitness from Laguna Hills, California, Mr. Rick Brown, Slick Rick Brown, mm -hmm. I give my greetings to, and his two uh, partners uh, involving steel, stone, and sugar. I would like to say hello to um, Eric Doyle, and Melody Schoenfeld of Steel, Stone and Sugar, as well as Rick Brown. Hey, hey. And I uh, would like to say also hello, greetings to the uh, premier personal trainer and uh, uh, a dietary consultant of the stars. Hey, hey. That's right, uh, Jersey uh, of the of the cast of Jersey Licious and the Housewives oh my God. of New Jersey, Mr. Mario Petrus. Good man, my right hand man, one of. And uh, I would like to say, give my greetings to Mr. Joe Stebbins. Jolton Joe Stebbins. Jolton Joe Stebbins. Okay. Uh, Anthony Laura, good friend, Anthony Laura, a local guy. Uh, and uh, Sean Hollywood. 
Sweet. I would like to give my greetings to the one and only, the Ayatollah of Rock and Roller, Sean. No, I'm sorry, Sean Morrison. <laughs> I'm sorry. His girlfriend is uh, Gina Hollywood. Sean Morrison. I am very sorry. Sean Morrison, the Ayatollah of Rock and Roller. I would like to also give my greetings to my good uh, friend, uh, Aborigine, uh, uh, of the pride of Aborigines. Uh -huh. uh, my Aboriginal friend, Mr. Shawnee Harris from uh, Western Australia. Uh, a very effective, very intelligent, and very devoted um, uh, civil rights activist in Australia. Uh -huh. I would like to also say hello to my uh, good friend and uh, male rights activist, Mr. Ronald King. I used to work with Mr. Ronald King. Greetings. And um, Stefan Dogman, a champion competitive kettlebell lifter and the, uh, the director, the president of Zirkene, France, uh, featuring Dogman's Dungeon. Stefan Dogman, I send you my greetings. Uh, Jean Luc Odon. He's a uh, he's a great man, a brilliant man, and uh, and Sash, Sa S Sash uh, uh, Boyle, Sasha Boyle. He's my uh, official administrator over at the Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth, which is our Facebook group that's connected to the show, and as well as the the partner Facebook page connected to this show which happens to be uh, Newsletter Censored. So, greetings to all these people. Uh, did I leave anyone out? Uh -huh. Zay Ricardo, uh -huh. uh, a Portuguese man who is a great uh, um, May swinger and um, uh -huh. Indian club swinger, Portuguese man living in Ireland. Zay Ricardo. And of course, congratulations to a, uh, another, his second Indian Club World Tour, uh, gone perfectly. Uh, Mr. Paul Terrace Wolkowinski has returned safely home to Perth, Australia from his Indian Club World Tour. Okay. I know that was rather long-winded, but not that long-winded. We still have plenty of time. So now let us sink our teeth into these um, readings. But uh, oh, by the way, there are more uh, news articles concerning police brutality oh, for, throughout, plenty of throughout the country, especially in the southern red states. A, 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 a little girl, a little Spanish high school girl, was held, held down, handcuffed, with one of the police officer's knees on her head, three big, well, three white Houston, Texas police officers had to, it took three of them to aggressively hold down this little Spanish girl in high school because she was using her cell phone in class. It's on our group. I posted the article on our group. Shame on you. Big, tough, macho, red state, southern police officers. Takes three of them to manhandle a little girl, little Latina girl, and put his knee on top of her head and cuff her because she had her cell phone in class. That's just the tip of the iceberg. I, I read another one where a, a young black man had his, he was handcuffed behind his back and the cop shot him in the back of the head because he felt like doing it. That happened recently too. So I'm gonna leave it up to you. Gary Null is doing a great job of exposing all of that brutality on Facebook. It's happening a lot. A lot. A little too often. I see a pattern. I, I, I'm good at noticing patterns when they're when they're forming. 
and I definitely see a pattern. And if it looks like a duck, it walks like a duck, it yeah, sounds like a duck. you see like a pattern a of militarized police. That was, the first, that was the first bad step, militarizing the police. Then came roughing up homeless people, uh, pepper macing innocent, uh, unarmed college girls, college co-eds, peaceful protesters being kicked in the head mm -hmm. and um, arrested and, and pepper maced. You know, and then it went from, you know, brutalizing, murdering a young black man. And that seems, seems to be a trend now, because it's not just Ferguson, Missouri. You know, there's a, there's a pattern for me. Yeah, the pattern, pattern is that uh, you know, the, the powers that be do not like dissent. They, they beat this homeless man to death, I think, in, um, in Arizona. A uh, homeless man was he was just being homeless you know hanging out and you know and uh that's it if welcome to the the uh um plutocratic fascist states of america stormtrooper yeah maxify because you know they want to see your papers today just like the Nazis. Let me see your papers. Your eh? papers. Actun. Your Actun. You have to. You have to show your papers because you are guilty until proven innocent. Yeah. Everybody today is a suspect because of 9/11. Everything. Everything went bad. You know, immigration policy. Well, everything went worse. See, a it was always bad. Yeah, it went worse. Okay. Republicans um, care a hell of a lot about a fertilized egg, but not those refugee immigrant children that are trying to escape the hellhole they were living in. You know, of course they have to throw them in a, some kind of detention center, like a, I don't know what it is, a barn, a, a chicken coop, or wherever they throw them. Yeah and ship them back. But they sure care about the fertilized egg. Yes, they do. In fact, somebody on your, uh, on your site said something to that effect the other day. Oh, we, we get a lot of right-wing uh, trolls, worms slithering in. And yeah, they're always, uh, they can't prove it. You, they can't prove that a fertilized egg and an embryo is a human being. It is a potential human being. What about the, the troll that says, what about the heart beating in the embryo? It's not alive yet. But there's no cognitive abilities. No, it don't have nothing to do with the brain. And then he's telling me there's brain waves. Oh, there's brain waves occurring. It's a parasite. It's living off the mother until it comes out and takes its first breath. Like God told, like God said about Adam, taking the first breath. What's so hard to understand? Oh, I'm sorry. There's no understanding involved here. It's ideology. Yeah, Brainwa okay. brainwashed. It's religious, counterfeit Christian ideology. Their, their religion, I call a cult. Well, a cult doesn't describe what it is. What Does is it? it? I mean, a cult can be anything. Well, what I mean is they're, I know what they're, you claiming, mean, to be, they're claiming to be Christian. Now you're getting on to it. But call them what they are. They don't counterfeit Christians. Yeah, they're phonies. They don't. They they don't preach what's in the Bible. What's in the Bible? It doesn't, doesn't matter if they have if they preach what's in the Bible. It matters if they say they gather their tenets and their ideas and stuff from the Bible. If they do that, then they're wrong. They're counterfeits. They're phonies. But if they say that, hey, anybody in America can establish a new religion. They can say anything they want. That's correct, and they'll get tax-exempt status. But their actions... From the uh, IRS. But their actions is what bears the fruit of what they're really about. The actions. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. These so-called Christians claim they get their ideas and stuff from the Bible. You know. I mean, they walk around with it. They thump on it. They I, make, they make uh, 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 colleges, Liberty University, based on it, but they don't obey it. No, they, 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 they wage war on the poor. 
They have a, a, a class war on the poor. Uh, Republicans are, are, are whining uh, about giving drug tests to all welfare recipients. Why don't we give drug tests to all the Congress? Huh? How about if they don't show up for work? Shouldn't their pay be docked? Absolutely. They, well, should, they should be suspended without None pay. of these things are done. They don't get reprimanded for taking long vacations and, you know, and pushing paper around for several days a month. Or for obstruction. No, they, they don't get penalized for any of that. Such as what occurred the other day with right. the vote for, against, uh, you know, we threatened to filibuster against Citizens United. Citizens Amendment. United, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they uh, blocked, they blocked progress. What Thank about you. putting a freeze on their salary raises just since they think $10.10 an hour is, is way they too much? They have an automatic raise every year. That I they, it's 3% that they arrange. That's right. They arrange the automatic raise. They're the Congress. They make the laws. Tell you, man, people, people better wake up. You're living in a very corrupt society here in the United States. <laughs> You know, but you'd be surprised how many stupid, imbecile, I mean, imbecilic, moronic, idiotic, whatever word you want to use, humanoids, poor excuses for humanoids that live out west and in the Midwest and all these red states and down south, or way down south in Dixie, that are so brainwashed and, and ignorant or maybe they're stupid. Maybe they don't have the ability to research on their own and learn. That's correct. Because... Non-educable. As was pointed out yesterday on Facebook, comes uh, uh, a study showed that the textbooks are wrong. Oh yeah, American okay, history. Okay, they're wrong. American history? For Texas is for responsible for that. For the lies. That's For correct. the lies. I didn't. I didn't learn anything about the genocide of Native Americans by the U.S. Army and by the by the the, co the pioneers that went west. You know, we heard they glorified all those people. Mm -hmm. The brave pioneers going west to make a life for themselves. Blah 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 blah. You know. In their kind of stoga wagon. And and General Custer was attacked by them the savages. We they, they didn't mention that the, the white colonists and the U.S. Army, they were the savages. Yeah. They started uh, attacking and, st and stealing from the uh, Native Americans. Who was that idiot that put up there the other day on your hard-hitting truth or something God, like that? a bunch that. of racists. And the idiot about the Redskins thingy. He said that, that Native Americans uh, call one another a Redskin so they they can differentiate them from other from white people. What a stupid thing! And what the hell does that have to do with the name? What does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean? But that doesn't look. Even if one person did it, that doesn't make it right. It's still a derogatory exact name. Yeah. You know. It's like nigger. You know. Yeah. Well, now yeah. they now the you kids. You can't use that again for somebody today. It's not. It doesn't. Political correctness. No, they, they put an A at the end. They don't they don't use E R. They they put a they get they they get a wise it. They get a wise They put an A at the end, but it still it still means the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, whatever derogatory term you're using, it's a form of bigotry no matter who the person is. That's correct. Yeah. A North Jersey. Oh boy. High school teacher is facing additional charges of having sex with her students. Oh, is she good looking? No. Is she There's, hot? No. Some some sometimes that we used to get substitute teachers that were hot, hot. and mm -hmm. young. Well, this is uh, every man's fantasy, isn't it? Young man's fantasy. To be seduced fantasy? by a hot-looking teacher? Yeah. To stay after class? Young man, 
uh, uh, young uh, William uh, Eisenman, you need to stay after class. Remain in your seat. The rest of you, dismissed. And then she goes and shuts the door and locks the door. I'm going to get a hand job. As soon as you see the door getting locked, you're you're excited already. You're aroused. Yeah. Arousal. <laughs> the Essex County Prosecutor's Office announced new charges on Friday against Columbia High School teacher Nicole Dufault. What's her name? Dufault. Nicole. Dufault? Fault? D U F A L U. Oh, like, uh, like a, fr a French. Like, it sounds like a French word. Well, yeah. then it's Dufal. It's Dufal. Because the T at the end of a French Sil word is silent. Silent. Yeah. Dufal. Dufal. The 35-year-old Caldwell resident was arrested on Tuesday and charged with sexually assaulting three students. Let me tell you something, universe. You cannot morally corrupt or traumatize a, a growing boy with raging hormones. It cannot be done. Maybe a girl could be traumatized, but not the boys. Isn't it funny though You're that doing them a big friggin' favor, man. Hey, isn't it funny that they never interview the boys in, in No, life? they never interview the boys. If they interviewed the boys, the boys would be like this. <laughs> right on, teacher. Uh, I want her every year to be uh, my homeroom uh, teacher. <laughs> Guaranteed. On Friday, two more alleged victims were added. Victims. <laughs> Dufal pleaded not guilty Friday to charges involving the original three alleged victims. What's her what's her first name? Nicole. Nicole Dufal. I salute you with my lucky Blackthorn <laughs> Shillelagh here at Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. James P. Madonna salutes you. Why didn't I have teachers like that when I was in school? She faces multiple counts ah. of first degree aggravated sexual assault and an endangering the welfare of a child. Bullshitsky, as my grandfather used to say. She is being held on $500,000 you, you lousy stinking right wing politicians Republicans in Trenton, New Jersey Trenton? It's K here in Bergen County Bergen County is uh, it is has yes. No, uh, Essex Excuse me, Essex Oh, Essex County? Yeah, Caldwell I, I was, I was going to say, yeah, Bergen County Bergen County, New Jersey is a snooty, hoity-toity county but this is Essex Shame on you dragging your your puritanical morality into the law. You can't corrupt the boy. Dufault, a language arts teacher at the school for about nine years, is alleged to have had sex with the students on school property and in her car. Which which could be on still on school property. Yeah parking lot, right? Yeah. Uh, she is also married and has two kids of her own. You think the boys proposition, uh, uh, you think the boys said, could you, could you increase my grade? Is there, any, <laughs> is there anything extra I can do? Extra testicular activity? Uh, should, well, I should have brought the levity bells. <laughs> it's, 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 this kind of situation is very strange to me because um, you wonder who made the first move. And, and stare word against hers. How do you prove it? No, I'm saying, who made the first move? Yes, yeah, true. That's nothing to do with their word or, or something. Did, did they seduce, In their situation, seduce. did the boys come on to her or did she come on to the boys? Well, I'm sure... The, the, I don't know. Uh, Nicole Defoe's Defoe's uh, husband is not too fond of hearing this news. <laughs> And if, if Nicole had children, she does too. Oh boy, embarrassing! The whole and family, and the whole enough. family, the, all her friends and relatives will know it, and everybody will know it, and the whole s school system will know it. Oh yeah, she'll be out of a job, no she's doubt. She's in a pickle. She's she's in quite a pickle. She yeah. she was going down on the pickle, 
and now she is in the the, the jar of pickles. The jar of pickles. She's getting pickled. She's diddled, man. She's diddled. She's diddled. Well, this is a rather invigorating reading to start off the uh, this week's show. Really big shoe. Using artificial sweeteners may set the stage for diabetes in some people by hampering the way their bodies handle sugar. The authors of the study said they are not recommending any changes in how people use artificial sweeteners based on their study, which included some human experiments. The researchers and outside experts said more study is needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While well, industry groups called the research limited and said other evidence shows sweeteners are safe. Let me tell you something. Artificial sweeteners are chemicals, industrial chemicals like Carlton Fredericks used to say. They are poison, they are toxic. Use Lohan Kuo or Stevia. Study from researchers in Israel was released on Wednesday by the journal Nature. The work suggests the sweeteners change the composition of normal beneficial bacteria in the gut. The uh, probiotics that we need. That appears to hamper how well the body handles sugar in the diet which in turn can result in higher blood sugar levels. This impairment called glucose intolerance can eventually lead to diabetes. Oh yeah, you keep on stressing and straining that pancreas. Some experts who didn't participate in the work urged caution in interpreting the results. Always always start with your diet. The, the late Robert C. Atkins used to say that the diet comes before the supplements. James Hill, an obesity expert at the University of Colorado, called the work good science. Still, overall, I do not think there is enough data yet to lead to a definitive conclusion. Oh, somebody's getting paid off. <laughs> They're always looking for more data. By the companies that make the artificial sweeteners. Yeah. I certainly do not think there is sufficient evidence to conclude that they, artificial sweeteners, are harmful. But there's tons of evidence. I see it all the time, online. But, Yanina Papino, what does she have to say? Of Washington University in St. Louis said, the results make a convincing case that sweeteners hamper the body's handling of sugar by altering gut bacteria. Not to mention the fact that they're carcinogenic, among other things. And it adds to her belief that sweeteners and sugar should be used in moderation. Why do they, um, when they have these, these meet hearings and whatever, why do these people uh, handle the pro a, a toxic product with kid gloves and sugar coat things? Why, why don't they just come clean? It's like when uh, Obama does the State of the Union. Uh, address. Come clean! Just directly there's, lower there's the boom, a, man. A mayor of a city which I have forgotten right now. Expose the bastards. He's a Republican. Right. And he he bought wholesale gasoline. Okay. Then he equipped his city with the pumps to pump his gasoline so that his people 
of the city, 11,000 people, could pay a lower price yeah. for gasoline. Like people, well, like people in uh, Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. Wow. What happened? Socialism! Socialism! Oh, but people should be price gouged. It's By the private it, sector, yes. It's been, fuck them. Yes. However, he said a truth in all of this. Socialism works. He said, the object of government is to protect us from big business. Not screw us. Or allow us to be screwed. But I, you're never going to hear that from a Republican. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, what, what do some police but cars say uh, to, 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 pro to protect and, to, and serve? To protect and serve? Yeah, the plutocrats. They protect and serve the plutocrats to beat, and the corporations. Should change it to uh, to beat the crap out of you, or arrest you, or, or kill you. <laughs> yeah, who's that idiot that put on your uh, one uh, thing there the other day? Uh, about uh, unions. What? Yes, he was talking about hey, unions. Somebody, somebody talked against unions. That's you, correct. You point out who this is. Oh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna I push remember. you through the sausage. You're gonna do the meat grinder. Wait till I. Oh, please, please, por favor, tell I, me who this person is. I don't remember who he was, but I answered him and said he said something about. Uh, Unions uh, 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 doing this, that, and the other thing against bosses and stuff. And I said, hey, wait a second. The bosses deserve it. I said, when's the last time you ever heard of a union person or whatever killing a boss? But the bosses killed uh, strikers, wives, children, whatever, with uh, 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 Pinkertons, National Guard, police, etc. Then how come they killed them? Then how so I come never saw any any union person kill a boss. Then were these Pinkertons uh, charged with murder? No. So they got away with murder. That's correct. That was the time at that time in the United States. Sounds Business could do no wrong. Sounds pretty corrupt to me. Well, of course it was. I'm surprised there was not a national uh, outrage. Uprising? Oh, gee whiz. Was there a national uprising when uh, 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 MacArthur, uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, and Patton went after the, uh, the, uh, 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 the bonus marchers in Washington to get their bonus promise from World War I? Well, they were supposed to get it. Yes, they were. But I just pointed out, those three heroes of ours, they cleaned them out. The and squatters. And what about the, the, on the mall. what about the, the press, all the newspapers nationwide? Did they, did they uh, do a story on this? Of course there's stories. There's video, there's a film. The stories and the nation. Film at 11. And there was no nationwide uprising. No. I mean, a real uprising. No. You know, where people are no. learn how to use an automatic weapon, and no. they go, you know, you know, they they. they That's the worst thing to do because you'll be popped off one, two, three. Yeah. It's what gotta what, be organized. What about pop, what about population? You ever see you ever see soldier ants on the march? What about them? That's what I'm talking uh, about. Uh, organization. A huge animal gets out of the way of a soldier ant. One person cannot fight a, 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 a militarized government. It's got to be organized. That's yeah, that's great. Got to be trained. I mean, not not trained in a goofy way, like when the British. But I got an easier way. When the British were fighting, they lost to the Appalachian people, the hillbillies in history. The, I never knew this because I wasn't told, but the. Appalachian people, the mountain men, mountain. kicked the British ass because the British were were marching out in the open field with their red coats, you know, and the guys playing the drum, and they're they're marching, you know, in formation, and the Appalachians were fighting like the Indians, the guerrilla warfare behind a tree, picking them off. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, but I got a better way and an easier way. What's that? Vote them out. 
and, then the, and then the violence ain't involved. Duh. Yeah. You know? Just don't vote two party system. Don't vote two parties at all. Period. Don't, Period. Do not back up the parties. That's right. Did you listen to um I was I didn't see it when it played, but I was listening to uh Bill Clinton on, on John Stewart, The Daily Show with John yeah. Stewart. Big Joe, uh, uh, on the minimum wage. Well, he, he, he touched Oh, no, he, the other day, you mean? He talked about ISIS first. Yesterday, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I saw it. But he was on Facebook last night talking about the minimum wage, how it uh, creates jobs and and it's the best thing as long you as mean you do it incrementally. Having a, a living minimum wage, a real minimum wage, like uh, Seattle, Washington has. You know? Yeah, well, the point is that the Republican argument is that it, 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 it'll it take away jobs, that will close down uh, small businesses. Yeah, sure. Those are, those, jo those uh, 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 they are not true. What about people, what about people who are stuck making uh, chicken feed for a living uh, like they do now and not having the surplus cash to put back into the economy? Well, that, that'll cause jobs to be lost because course, less customers will come in your... We're living that right now. Less customers will come in your Six store. Six years we're living that. Since look, 2008. Look, Six years. You're giving the American worker less and less and less. Therefore, he has less and less and less in his wallet or, or purse. Yeah. And that, that means they will spend less and less and less. And guess what? The banks, of course, are giving you 0, 0.00 something one as far as interest is concerned oh, really? on your money. Oh, it's that so you're bank? not going to put your money in a stinking bank. It's it's no more 5% in the bank? Get the hell out of here. 5% was years ago. Then where's the incentive to put it? There is none. They want you to spend it. Oh, it's getting spent. But, but you can't spend it if you ain't got it. No, it's getting spent on living uh, expenses. Cost of living is Not sucking up. Not for the homeless. No, no. Really? I mean the people who have their nose above water. Yeah, exactly. Which is most of America. Who? I mean, I 80 mean. Eighty percent of America doesn't have its nose above water. Nostrils. You mean they're? They're drowning. They're drowning. Yeah. And then, and then that uh, that but right, the point I'm right to wing make... troll from New Hampshire, Ginger. She's saying she's trying to make it sound like, oh, uh, I have a relative that's uh, works in an employment agency, and she's placing people left and right. There's there's jobs. There's plenty of jobs out there. Bullshit. Um, let me get back to some gentleman. Yeah, do this on first. your one of your uh, groups, and then you. He defends the minimum wage because he says, hey, that's young kids just getting started. I read that. I, young you kids, know? they need some pocket money. They're living at home. That's right. I got news for them. One third of the people living on minimum wage today are over 40 years old. You know how many adults had to move back home into their bedroom, into their original bedroom? Yeah. Because, you know, so... You know, the, these women, these American women that say, oh, it's very unattractive for, uh, for a man to still live at home with his mother. Well, I got news for you. There's a lot of women, grown women that are moving back home as well as men because they can't but afford the high bad. rents. Times are bad. But let me get back to the bank. Get back to the bank, man. Because this is important. Right, where's my shillelagh? The reason, well, a bank works like this. You put money in the bank, the bank lends it out, and it lends it out ten times to the one dollar or so that you put into the bank. And, and if you don't pay it back... No, 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 let's not get into right, let's that. not go that far, okay? Jesus Christ, man. Please. I'm trying to make a point. The banks do not want your money to so that they pay you interest because the Fed is feeding them less than 1% interest. You see? They don't need your money. They don't need it. Well, why is the Fed kowtowing to them? 
that's not kowtowing, that's what they're doing. Okay. Now, we need to do away with banks like that and make the banks socialized from the government. Is that like, like North Dakota is that for like, the last hundred years. Is that, is that like the, uh, the federal credit union banks? Federal well, credit the federal unions. credit unions, I wouldn't say federal. The credit they, unions. Yeah, credit unions are much better. And they would be better, they're, they're better than the savings and loans. Credit cards, right? absolutely. So, say, so it'll be commercial bank, they're the scoundrels, then savings and loan, then credit union. Yeah, but the point is, if we have our own government banks, you can charge two percentages, whatever you want. And you're going to make money for your city or town or whatever it, the bank is set up. Why does it have to be the private sector all the time? That's what I say. How did we get into this? Why does every fucking thing in America have to be the private sector and privatized? It it always ends up in trouble. It never works, except for the rich. Correct. It only helps the rich, and and, my, and I feel that. The, the, they do it because they can. They can, and because the politicians allow them to, because they're getting paid off by the private sector. Why do you think that the corporations and the rich and everything have all the tax loopholes? They paid for them. They paid for them. All, all the privileges that the corporations have, and the privileges that the uh, Republican Congress has. And Republican senators, well, all of them, lock, oh. stock, and barrel, they they have it because they they made these rules themselves, and uh, the people, uh, the elitists, the uh, the corporations, they they pay them off to get their way a hundred percent of the time. Yeah, it's really simple math. Yeah, it's not complicated. Yeah. Oh, but it gets complicated by ideology. Socialism! Socialism! Uh, yeah, you got all these... these. I see them all the time. What did that jerk on say uh, on your Yankee thing the other day? Yankee Doodle Dandy, patriotic, patriotic... Hey. Blah, blah, blah. What did that idiot say on your thing the other day? Uh, we don't live in a democracy, we live in a... Republic. Uh, republic, uh, uh, a constitutional republic. And it's always... Better know the difference. And he says, it's, 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 he's, yeah, he says it's always been that way, know the difference. Yeah. I remember him. We never used to vote for senators, now we vote for senators. We are a democracy, but we have been kicked out. The corporations and the plutocrats own the government. You what know? is this deal? What is it all time? <laughs> George Bush and all the what? We're going to go over and we're going to democratize the Middle East. Maybe what they do don't. What do they mean by that? Maybe they, they don't. mean the people vote. Maybe they don't want to uh, uh, be democratized and and, and, be, don't. and become capitalist countries. Maybe they don't want to. They don't want things forced on them. Well, we want to do that to make more business. It's done out of greed. More uh, consumers. It's done out of greed, just mm. like this uh, everything from. Uh, uh, what did uh, the, Kissinger the, uh, say last night? ISIS and uh, ISIS and uh, uh, Syria situation there to uh, the Ebola uh, 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 pandemic that uh, Monsanto wants to control the treatment of of the Ebola virus with their fucking vaccines. What did Kissinger say? The army are just pawns yeah. to move around anywhere you want. Yeah, they also call them dumb. Well, of course dumb, yeah. Well, what would you call it? What the hell would you call it if you... I used to make... I used to make... Uh, uh, not fun. Of search and destroy during the Vietnam War. Which was the most pathetic thing I ever seen. And one movie. I don't know what it was, whether it was the Deer Hunter or me the Metal Jacket or whatever. Uh, Full uh, Metal Jacket. Or uh, Apocalypse Now. One of those showed it very clearly. They were, uh, there was a the little platoon on a search and destroy mission and the enemy just popped them off. Oh, they were in tunnels. The they weren't in tunnels. They were out in the open. 
The Viet Cong utilized tunnels. Yes, 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 but this did not involve that. And they popped up out of nowhere. Stop giving them an, a defense. The Viet That's Cong, a defense you the just Viet gave. The Viet Cong were smart. Uh, well, they won, didn't they? Was that my point? No. Well, then, stick to my point. And the napalm. All right, go ahead. The point was having our soldiers out in the open search and destroying was a bad oh yeah tactic. oh yeah 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 that's yeah. my point yeah it's like what i was saying yeah. before about the british trying to exactly. uh, trying to take over the appalachian region from the from the mountain people exactly and and they just got picked off because you know exactly. this guerrilla warfare versus everybody marching in formation out of the open exactly now i have something to tell you, to ask you, or to, to, to tell you, oh. and then get your response. Are you finished with this particular? No! Thing? All right, finish it. Finish it. Researchers began by testing three widely used sweeteners. Saccharin, sold, for example, as sweet and low. Sucralose, sold as splendid. Aspartame, sold, for example, as NutraSweet. How did I get the word NutraSweet? It's beyond me. Nutri does not belong with aspartame. They did experiments in mice. Some animals got one of those substances in their water. Poor mice. <laughs> Others got sugar water or just water. After 11 weeks, researchers gave all the mice a dose of sugar and monitored the response in their blood sugar levels. The mice that initially got the sugar showed about the same response as those that got plain water. But mice that got any of the sweeteners showed markedly higher blood sugar levels, indicating impairment in the handling of the sugar dose. I don't have to poison mice to tell you what is good and what isn't good. Any chemical put in the body is not going to be good. Some people don't understand that. No, they're, they're brain cell deficient. They got chemicals in their bread. They got chemicals in their vaccine. They got chemicals here, there, and everywhere. And soon to come, GMO bananas will be entering our supermarkets. Lovely, isn't it? Further, mouse experiments linked that outcome to an effect on gut, 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 gut bacteria. But <coughs> friendly flora, probiotics. Friendly flora. Very important for our health. Now, you you completed that. That's right. right. Let, let me say quickly, have you heard of the story the recent story of uh, in the state of Wisconsin, uh, I think Scott Walker uh -huh. is something's going on up there. But Scott yeah, Walker, yeah, he's, he's, he's been indicted. He's been indicted. Yeah. Certain certain uh, racist redneck right wing militias are threatening to shoot African Americans if they go to the polls to vote. Yeah, sorry. You heard that story? Yeah. I say the National Guard should, should be at every poll location, and the police, both. Why not arrest those militia for these threats? Maybe Scott, because they, they, were, they I think a because threat they, is they, not they support considered. because they support Scott Walker. Hey, I don't I don't think a threat is con is, is considered freedom of speech. No. Yeah. No, it's not. Especially and, and today when. I think it's considered. And also, a, a also a, uh, a false a false alarm calling nine one one with a false alarm is not considered freedom of speech either. Yeah, this is indictable. Right. Correct. Pick them up, rough them up, and throw them in the hooskin. Yeah, you 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 you're Stand going against up little kids and girls. You're going against the Constitution. You know. There should there should be. I mean, I'm no expert, uh, you know, at law, but this should be a, a, an amendment that that 
protects anybody from tampering with the Constitution in a negative way. You know, anything that is uh, that is uh, deleterious to the people, to the to the mainstream. Uh, the Supreme Court does that all the time. I know. I heard. I, I read some okay. of uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's uh, great uh, speaking. That's correct. The wonderful things that she said, and she she flat out comes out and say that the Supreme Court, the other side of it, is corrupt. Five. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, it's been that way since the 1800s with the railroads and etc. The corruption was magnet. Was it the it Supreme was Court? Fantastic. Was it the Supreme Court that uh, that said, uh, "Never mind Al Gore, G.W. Bush won." Yes. Re-election. It gave him the. It turned. Yeah. It gave uh, G.W. Bush the election. He gave it to him. Then every count afterwards, words done by newspapers, uh, uh, Great Palace, whatever show that Gore won. But Gore didn't bring his lawyers down there like the Republicans did. He pussied out. That's correct. He wimped out. He, he, he conceded. He conceded, for God's sake. He threw in the towel. Yeah. Knowing full well that he had GW beat on votes. But that's just the tip of the iceberg of what the Supreme Court has done. Of course. Just the tip. Every time I think of those right-wing scoundrels in the Supreme Court. I think it had bloated toed Antonin, Antonin Scalia, Scalia with yeah. a double chin. Who belongs to a religion that converted by the sword, killing over 50 million people throughout history. The cat lick. Him and that, uh, that uh, Clarence tongue. Oh, he's the Monsanto man. His woman is. His, his wife. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, he, he. Uh, there, there was something he that he put a stop. He, there, there was a law that was that was going yeah, to be passed. Yeah, he should have accused himself, but he didn't. There was there was a law that was going to really uh, uh, stick it to Monsanto. Good, and he put a stop to it, Clarence Correct. Thomas. When he should have recused himself. Said I cannot uh, decide on this issue because I have a conflict of interest. Even Republicans you're don't not recognize. You're supposed to have a conflict of interest. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're a judge, you're not supposed to have a conflict of interest with. Oh, people. but they do, don't they? With decisions, it's just as in the old days, they had conflicts of interest with the railroads. It's a who were paying them off. It's a fancy way of saying I'm corrupt, but I can't say that I'm corrupt. It's not. It's not a good word. So I'll say, oh, I have a conflict conflict of interest. Therefore, I cannot make a decision. Well, I will decide in favor of Don Corleone because he pays my salary. Okay? Yeah. That's how it is. You can ask him a, a favor if it's, if it's his daughter's during his daughter's wedding. <laughs> I think that's the rule. That's the rule of it. Well, I saw it on uh, American Dad cartoon. He said it. No, no, a family, a, a family guy. That's it. They said it's some kind of rule yeah. that they have. All right. I'm gonna have to leave it here because we're. Perfect. Yes, that is true. That is true. It is now time for the Reverend Doctor William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight, known as lunch, followed by me joining with William H. Morrow. Hey, hey. William H. Morrow. The third for the last time in a long time because he is going on a world tour and I'm not sure with all his seminars when he's going to be back but you know Godspeed to you have a safe journey hey. and good luck and we'll keep in touch of course he still does the commercial for us the promo and the introduction but uh, I'm happy for him he's got a, a whole bunch of uh, voiceover assignments lined up so anyway, just after I, I get with him now, he does promo and we'll be back with the balance of the show.
Okay, we're here with William H. Morrow the um, third. Uh, uh, Billy, um, on on a lighter note, you know, uh, not mentioning politics this time. I uh, I was in the area and I stopped in Kmart. Uh, I was in the area for a storage bin, plastic storage bin, and I went over to the um, the kitchen supplies section. I wanted to take a look at one of my favorite products, the Ninja. Now I noticed that the new Ninja that that is competition for the Nutri Bullet, you know the uh, 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 it's like a, a pint serving uh, canister. Well, that's all it is. You put you put you when you buy the full complete Ninja, you get two of those okay. anyway. That's what I'm leading up to. But this is the new separate one they have. That's yeah, the it, it's the answer to the Nutri Bullet yeah. and the other ones where you uh, you make a smoothie out of fruits and vegetables and anything you want. Okay, so it has the same fantastic blades that the ninja has uh, the same powerful no well less less a little less watts than the big one but I realize this they want about eighty dollars for it and it, for another twenty bucks for another twenty dollars you've got the ninja pro the deluxe ninja which I think is give or take a hundred dollars or a hundred and thirty. Well, you remember what I told you, your best deal for the Ninja is not in the store, it's on TV. Because that's where they knock one off. You pay a little bit more, but they give you extras along with it, plus the five-year warranty too. So you get what you pay for as seen on TV, as they say. Yeah. And uh, it's 1,500 watts, two horsepowers, super blade system. It blows away anything on the market. So like, instead of people running out and saying, oh, cool, it looks like the neutral bullet for less money, I'm going to buy it. Don't spend 80 bucks on that. Spend another but, 20, 30. In defense, the Ninja is better than a Nutri Bullet. But I have friends that have the Nutri Bullet, and they say it's the best thing they ever bought. So can you imagine what the Ninja must be like? When my friends that have the Nutri Bullet said it's phenomenal. Yeah, I got I had so the same go. reviews yeah. about the yeah. Nutri Bullet. Yeah, they said that, that nothing wrong with the Nutri Bullet. I guess the Ninja is far right better right. superior what but i mean i mean uh, uh <coughs> value wise instead of paying 80 bucks for the ninja bullet whatever well whatever ninja's answer well, to the neutral remember, bullet. when you buy it on tv you get the 72 ounce pictures right the 40 ounce pr food processor right and two of those personal uh, right super bullet style uh, right. Things too. Now, now, I'm. This is not a paid uh, advertisement for. No, we're just talking. For Ninja. We like a product. It's we're, a product we're very, very much in love with. Right. We like it. Just like the <clears throat> the, the Bullworker. I have a feeling a is great product. Is it? It's, they're presenting it like an uh, infomercial, but I think it's genuine. I think it's high quality. But what I'm trying to get at, folks out there, instead of buying something as soon as it comes out because you're all excited and enthusiastic. About about it analyze the deluxe model look at the prices compare of course of course look for reviews online like Amazon but realize that why pay $80 for the smaller well, one by the same token let's be careful what you buy to its stores now I don't know if it was a misprint or what but the ninja on TV is two horsepower, 1500 watts super blade system. The one that's advertised in some of the catalogs of the area retailers is 1000 uh, 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 watts. watts. Now that's a big difference from 1500 to 1000. Why is that? So a lot of people don't read the so called fine print. Now the Vitamix, they still want about $400 for it. Or more. And, or more. and from what I understand, the Ninja, the Ninja beat out the Vitamix. Oh, big time. There's no comparison. Yeah. But I'm just There's saying, no, no comparison. instead of rushing into something, people, and, and buying it outright when it's advertised, check out and see how much more money you would have to kick in to get the deluxe model. Or do you spend a little bit more on TV and get a lot more return that they're giving with the extras? Yeah. You see? That too. Exactly. Don't think, every, don't think every, a bargain is a bargain is a bargain, as they say. Yeah. What are you getting extra if we're paying a little bit more? So. Well, this is why I love science and technology. It just, it's just it's advancing at such a rapid rate with everything, with the with the green movement, with the solar energy, uh, uh, hydroelectric, with, with appliances. I mean, God, this is unbelievable. With the appliances.
how how like more efficient, uh, better, like uh, like the new the, what is it the new wave oven, which is incredible. Everybody everybody I know and you do too said they never use their regular ovens again. They said it's phenomenal. It yeah. far exceeds what the infomercial claim. Uses convection, infrared, halogen. I think. Yeah, I think that, I think that's right. Halogen. It's incredible what it does. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong, people. There are many infomercial products that are garbage and nonsense. And there are a lot that are incredible right. and are be- and f- far exceed their claims. Right. And it's like anything in the world. Hey, there are good doctors, bad doctors. There are great cops, bad cops. Yeah. Firemen, blah, blah, blah. Is any thing 100%? Yeah. No. Just remember like, that. from when I was in Kmart, I, I walked over to the sporting goods section and I noticed a whole line of different Joe Weider sp- uh, exercise products. You're kidding. And they had the Joe Weider. still available? Yeah, Joe Weider, the wheel, the stomach wheel, which is phenomenal. They even had a 20 pound vest, a adjustable vest with sand inside you wear it and do your dips you can do dips you can do push-ups Running. you can do yeah that's i mean that's not bad Joe for, for, was a uh, trailblazer for ca- uh, um, calisthenics uh, the two, exercises the two trailblazers back then were joe weeder bob hoffman man bob hoffman out of my old town york pennsylvania where i used to live you know what i found online i found a an old york barbell banner when they had the complete soup to nuts York set for only 40 bucks. Way back when, yeah. for 40 bucks, you got a complete. You got the full bar, I forget how many plates and this and that. But you had accessories. You got, yeah. You know, like I think the wrist roller, the. Yeah. Uh, um, you, had, you had accessories that came with the bar of the dumbbell. You got a lot back then. And, and did you know York originally made a uh, home heating system? They made oil burners? No. The York Barbell Company originally was a, a that's York, what Bob Hoffman did no Hoffman bought it out I think I think the the, the actual plant itself made burners oh and, so he just bought a, a out of business plant yeah I mean no actually oh. I don't know if the Hoffman family was involved in burners I really don't know I have to research no it but it's when I went to the York Barbell Museum website the Museum of uh, weightlifting Yes, it used to be a company that made burners. You'd like it down there. York's a nice area. The museum looks very nice. When Harley Davidson is down there too. You mean when Harley first started making motorcycles, the, the main office? One of places and the big, the big industrial construction equipment, Caterpillar, has a plant that is incredibly yeah. huge. I Caterpillar thought, is big down there. I thought Harleys were manufactured in, in Wisconsin. In Milwaukee, in Wisconsin, it's their headquarters, yes. They have a huge place in York. Oh, you mean they have a, a plant in York? Yeah, oh yeah. All right. yeah. Sure. So, all right. Sure. Listen, it was great having you. Uh, likewise. As always. I know this is a short one, but I have another show to do. That's right. I mean, I have another. Time, everybody. All right. Bye bye. They raved with Miss America, Jesus. Oh, it's my error. I'm sorry. It came out the wrong way. Oh, mine too. Your name? Uh, you know your first name? No. No. Have you don't have a first name. <laughs> All right. We have a, 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 a very good friends of ours, a, a a very nice couple that we uh, chat with every now and then. Uh, let's call them. Uh, like the very nice couple that we chat yeah, with every now and then. Okay, now we were talking. Nice? Did you know uh, Keeman Voyages? I'm sorry. Keeman Voyages. Never hear of him. He won his best legs in, uh, against Steve Reeves. Oh, you well, mean? Because he shaved the blade. He was uh, he was a, nemes- a nemesis of uh, Steve right, Reeves. Right, uh, <laughs> and then there was like, Eric Pettison. Like a hole in the head, aren't they? You ever hear that name, Eric Pettison? Do we have a name that? No, no I, I only know I license. I only know about uh, certain ones like. Uh, Keenan Boyd just had the best legs. Best legs competition. They were talking about nostalgic bodybuilding from uh, the golden years. Uh, you know, I mentioned John Grimmick was John the king. John Grimmick is king. 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 King yeah, King. that's right. Yeah, John Grimmick. He was like, he's dead he now, like but the, he's a legend of bodybuilding. He was like, the back in the, I think, 40s and 50s or just yeah, 50s. Bob Hoffman's uh, right hand man. Oh, you know really? Bob Hoffman, your barbell. He was trained by Hoffman. I think, you know, Joe Weider trained under Hoffman. Right, he did. That's a different, uh, Wait, you know what he did? When he became rich and famous, Joe Weider, he denied any connection whatsoever to oh, Bob yeah. Hoffman. 
They were partners in Jersey City, I heard, with the first Muscle magazine. They were? Yeah, and, and he denied, Weider denied it. A any association. So Weider was cutthroat, in essence. Yes, yes. Somewhat. Wow, that's yeah. bad. He totally says, I, I was never in, in league with Hoffman, and that was a lie. Hoffman trained him. Oh, man, that's bad. It's, that's not right. That's horrible. That's not right. Give him better words, too. He used to go to his gym, uh, and the. Uh, What's his name? Uh, I can't. Uh, just uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the uh, Italian wrestler. He was, uh, Bruno San Martino. Yeah, Bruno San Martino. He was a power, a world class power lift. He was working out in the gym, a 30 second street gym. They used to have a gym, and uh, they called the uh, Heyman Boy used to work out there too. Oh wow. And I used to go up to the gym uh, when I was younger and better shape. <laughs> it was a Vic Tanny back then too, right? Now, yeah, Vic Tanny, but that, that wasn't Vic Tanny. That was just a uh, just a rough gym that, that people would work out. Yeah. You pay so much and so much. One time they came over and they says, uh, uh, you can buy, yeah, you need uh, $50 and you get a lifetime membership. I says, wow, $50 and I, and for I a says, lifetime membership. About it. I says, I see the, the walls coming down. When they do that, they, you know, it means that they, they're going out of business. Fifty dollars for a lifetime membership. They're not gonna. Yeah, they're not gonna survive on that. So I took a uh, two-year membership. Figure yeah. Uh, uh, and then even then they could chop down on me. Right. Because I was, uh, you know, that was too much. Right. Now, now, um, I would assume most weightlifters. Bodybuilders were not on steroids back then. They were natural. Yeah, yeah. They were natural. Even though some people, some people, uh, somebody that I know insists that they had. I know of anybody. They just eat all uh, uh, foods. Like you know. the uh, pottage, cottage, pot cheese, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, they ate good. They, you know, yeah. uh, they had desiccated liver or whatever. But uh, the first uh, over-the-counter testosterone was in 1936. I saw the uh, pharmacy advertisement for it. It was supposed you saw it? to. I saw, yeah, the original. 1936. 1936. It was over-the-counter. I'm 25 years old. Yeah, it was. It was around, uh, but it was over-the-counter. But um, then later, of course, it became by prescription only. But uh, often, what I do with with these this lovely couple here we talk about food a lot because uh, we all know where weightlifting and bodybuilding went to now they're all loaded with drugs drug abuse but uh as far as food goes we were talking about the best fast food restaurants in history our favorite i pick um between years ago and today, I picked uh, Arthur Treacher's Fish and Chips, White Castle, Roy Rogers, uh, uh, White uh, Popeyes. I like Popeyes, with, which is not an old company, but I, I like it. And that's it. Uh, um, but you 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 enjoyed Arthur Treacher's and Roy Rogers, right? You like them both? I usually eat, uh, ate at home most. Uh, uh, roast beef. Roast beef, yeah. Yeah, Arby's. Oh, Ar Arby's. He likes roast beef. Yeah, but you know what happened when I went to Arby's? It wasn't a real like sliced bottom round or top round. It was like steakum. It was like a like a like a beef like a loaf or something. It processed beef. Yeah, it was well done. It was well. It was all well done. Yeah, it, it didn't. It was not pink. No, it wasn't pink. You know, medium rare or rare. It it, 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 it was like a product called steakum, which is not real sliced roast beef. And that's what I didn't like about it. Now today I got the. Yesterday I got the roast beef. At Liquid Day, it's five ninety-five. I go there too, the food market. 
Yeah, yeah, you go upstairs. Yeah, the, the International Food Market. I go there. I go there, I go to Han H Mart, you know, the Korean place. I used to go once to... They, a good, excellent seafood department, you know, impeccable. But, uh, um, but now hot dog places, there, there was a lot of famous, at one time, famous hot dog landmarks. There was Johnny Hange's in Patterson. Now it's in, in Fairlawn on Maple Ave. There's uh, Callahan's, remember Callahan's? Hot dogs. Famous hot dog places. Yeah. This Rutz Hut, which was a really greasy as hell, but a lot of people oh, yeah. love it. They're famous for their onion rings. Rutz Hut. And there's also in um, in Patterson um, Libby's. Libby's. It's in an old building. It was an old hot dog joint from way back. I'd never been there. I, I, I've driven by it. Well, most of my uh, youth was in uh, New York, the Bronx, not uh, New Jersey. So you had you a bunch had of caves. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Park. That's where you outran the dinosaurs every day, right? To get to school. Yeah. Yeah. You hop, how many miles in snow to get to school? <coughs> school was uh, across the street. No shoes uh, for your so feet. So you didn't walk like Abe Lincoln. Well, you lived near the school. <laughs> yeah, because that's yeah. how New York was. You didn't take buses. No. The only one I had to go to uh, uh, high school. High school. Mile away. Uh, uh, go go to Samuel Gompers. Really? Home? Okay. Well, you don't have cafeterias. There's no cafeteria. Was there a place called Everybody Spumoni Gardens when you were a kid? Where? Somebody took me in Brooklyn to a place called Spumoni Gardens. Oh, Kew Gardens. Kew Gardens it was never Spumoni. No, Kew Gardens Brooklyn's is in different. Queens. Brooklyn is different. Yeah, Brooklyn. You had landmarks. Best to go there. Now? <laughs> yeah, you get you get mugged over there too. It's a lot of bad. There's a lot of bad areas in Brooklyn now. It's like the Roach Motel. People check in, but they don't check out. <laughs> Roach Motel. Oh, that's it, right? Modern day Roach Motel. We have levity from William H. Morrow the Thor. We all that humor. <laughs> At its worst. Levity? It's like saying garbage is rubbish. It's pure trash. <laughs> yeah, in, in the fancy neighborhoods, they call it garbage rubbish. Where when he lived in Ridgewood, it it said rubbish. It that's didn't say garbage. Good riddance, to good riddance to bad rubbish. Yeah. But that's what I like to say to the Repub Republican Congress. But uh, so uh, yeah, we were talking about the appliances before. The, uh, there's a product called the Ninja. It's fantastic. Uh, you can blend anything. You can put whole fruits and vegetables. The peel, the the core, grind you up. It liquefies it. Well, it's, it's stronger than a bullet. It, it liquefies everything. Yeah. You can put a, a whole zucchini in there, a whole apple. So everything washes right down your system. So yeah. You don't do anything. No, it you don't need to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. It, it liquid. I'm gonna make a thing of you. You know that. Speaking of teeth, <laughs> you know what I noticed? I, I am very. Uh, um, this come out? Upset about it because it's. I don't think it's fair. The government, like Medicare, like they won't pay for for dental unless. Uh, I mean. Uh, they won't pay, they'll, they'll pay 80%, right, of dentists, but like in other words, it's very hard to get them to cover 100% of dental. I don't even know if they do cover dental. Medicare does not cover dental when we had dental work Oh, uh, Medicare won't pay for dental. My first uh, encounter with dentists was uh, with the... Uh, Doc Holiday from no, no, Tombstone, Arizona. This little Jewish guy. He's a five dollars. Uh, he's just. No, they just yanked him. They just pulled. They just pulled him. No, Leave you a bottle of whiskey. Oh. For okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William H. Moore the Third, for your meeting with me in uh, in. Uh, the last show for for a long time. I don't know when you're going to be uh, back in New Jersey for a long enough time to, to do another show, but have a safe journey, my friend, and I will talk to you soon. Okay. Um,
And uh, the promo that you just heard, remember, the best way to be a part of our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. Go directly to NewsletterCensored.com and um, that's it. Let's, let's get right back to the balance of our show. Air Force officials say they are changing their policy on enlistment oaths and will allow airmen to omit the word, so help me God, if they choose. They should omit the word because uh, following orders that you're getting from the uh, U.S. military is not necessarily the, the correct and best decision. The decision came after an airman of, at Chi Creech Air Force Base, Nevada, struck out the words on his Department of Defense reenlistment paperwork and ran up against a policy that prohibits omission. Oh, this idiot actually wanted to re-enlist? Well, he was probably, he was probably one of those pistol-packing uh, uh, teabaggers. The case went to the Department of Defense General Counsel, which issued an opinion Wednesday, saying the language could be left out if the airmen preferred. Attorney Monica Miller of the American Humanist Association said the airmen's commandors told him, August the 25th, that he must swear to God or leave the Air Force. Leave! Leave! I would take orders from the old conservative religious nut. I believe it was last night. There was a video on Facebook. Okay. It was. I won't know if it was Air Force. What? 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 Where? A what? Army. Whatever. Or what branch? It was military. And they were all singing and hugging and singing their praises to Jehovah. Oh, I, I saw the Did image. You see that? I saw as soon as I saw their arms up in the air. Yeah. I, I bypassed it. Well, you ought to listen to it. You know. Anyway. Yeah, uh, singing their praises to Jehovah as they're causing much unneeded collateral damage. Uh, and basically, I think it was uh, to the extent that uh, uh, the idea was, I think, that our God is uh, bigger than your God. There's one God. Meaning uh, Jehovah over I got Allah. I got news for them, but uh, you know, um, like you always say, God is not political. That's correct. He has his own government. And why he's, would he be political? And he's certainly, definitely, without a doubt, not a right-wing conservative. That's correct. <coughs> because if you read the Bible, you idiots, you would see that the Bible is pretty liberal. For the we, most part. You know, well, you could use those terms, I guess, but... Well, as far, as far as the compassion and empathy and helping the poor and, and the rich helping the poor, giving to the poor. But, yeah, but God's laws are character builders. Right. That's what they are. That's what I meant. So they're trying to instill a character which you would call liberal. Right, the, the Christ-like character. That's right. It's a highly anticipated day of the year in Alaska. When residents learn how much money they'll receive 
from the state's oil wealth savings account. You betcha. Drill, drill, drill. A payout people receive just for living in the last frontier. Which, by the way, Palin likes. Because, because it makes the people all happy. But isn't happy. that socialism? Because, the, yeah, the people are getting extra money. They're getting found money from the oil companies. These, these are the citizens of Alaska. Yeah. Residents. Residents, yes. They're getting found free money from big oil, which means they will like big oil, which means they will vote Republican when uh, uh, election time comes in Alaska. That, that's what probably that, that, that's why Sarah Palin arranged this. I believe though that they voted the opposite way. They voted Because Democrat? Palin was for this. And I believe she was disappointed with the results. Oh good, anything that disappoints Palin, Sarah Palin or, or Michelle Bachman. But why would people vote against is, uh, them receiving this money? Well, yeah, well, uh, maybe because Palin want, uh, maybe because the politicians uh, in the uh, Alaska's capital wants to pocket the money. We don't know, but it's very peculiar. They're di they're they're uh, um, redirecting it somewhere else. Apparently, we don't know that. Hmm. This year's share. Of nearly nineteen hundred dollars is the sweetest since the Great Recession. But well, didn't Chris Christie uh, uh, put a stop to the homestead tax rebates in New Jersey for the elderly and the disabled? And yes. That was extra money that helped a lot of people. Yes, it was. Yes, so it was. I see a similarity. Well, of course. Yeah. So this is the third richest ever. Speaking of Mr. Christie, he wants the George Washington Bridge investigation stopped. Oh, oh, duh. oh, poor baby. Get off my back. He, oh, he wants it stopped. The, yeah. the great dictator wants it stopped. Yeah, wasted a lot of money. Yeah, because he don't want to get fried. <laughs> he don't want to get fried, died, and laid to the side. Governor Sean Parnell, Sean Parnell announced the amount of the Alaska Permanent Fund dividend on Wednesday. The payout to be distributed October the 2nd is more than double the amount of last year's $900 checks. Oh. But short. Oh, really? Short of the record payout of $2,069 in 2008. To every Alaskan resident? That's great. Oh, that's a nice extra chunk Little of change. Little chunk of change, baby. Oh, that's good because then the Alaskans will, will put it back into the economy. They'll spend. Oh yeah, they'll buy... Uh... Unless they're cheap bastards and then they won't spend. But uh -oh. yeah, they'll put it back in there. That That's much higher than the homestead rebates. Yes, it was. Twice as much. So now it was done away with. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it was done away with. I know there was some kind of vote. And it didn't turn out as Palin wanted. That's what I know. Now, what did Palin want? She wanted to... She wanted it to continue. To continue. Yeah. Oh, because she, she wanted everybody... Socialism. Her, her state to... She's against socialism, but she's for it. Yeah. It, it, they're selective in their... They're selective in their inability to know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> the Tea Party. I was just imitating them. Since when does the United States announce to the world what its military strategy is and what it will not do? No boots on the ground is a nice political pronouncement, but how smart is this when we already have nearly 1,000 advisors on the ground in Iraq? Advisors? Yeah. Who are they advising? The Iraqis. The Iraqis are... We're retraining their army it's that we already trained once. It's taking this long? 
How about Afghanistan? We trained their army to shoot us. Right. Yes. Did, didn't that happen with ISIS? No, we haven't been. Uh, we've been paying ISIS. Okay. okay. As we paid Al Qaeda and all the other terrorist organizations. Paid them to to leave us alone and like us. No, to help them. To help them. To buy armaments. Etc. Etc. And then we experience blowback because, as the Bible says. America buys its lovers, well, um, and the love don't last. You know? No, it's like it's like uh, paying a prostitute per session. If, you know? I mean, the session's up. Ding! The timer went off. Gas register, clean that thing. Up. Oh. Your hour is up. Hour. Well, they're lucky if they get an hour these days. All right, half hour. Whatever it maybe is. Maybe 20 minutes. Maybe. Your time is up. You better get that erection and get off within 20 minutes, pal. Otherwise, you're going to have to get your, get your wallet open again. Exactly. <laughs> that's, what's, that's what they're doing. Um, they're taking a lot of abuse unnecessarily, you know. It's a, uh, for a powerful country like this, they're just putting up with a lot of abuse. Well, it is clear, as the Bible also says, America won its last war with World War II. It has lost oh, yeah. every war since then. And uh, um, what, what was the one down in, uh, what was that uh, little... Grenada? Yeah, Grenada. Well, is that counted as a war and, and they won? Come on, yeah. get out of town. Korea, Vietnam, etc. All of them lost. Mm -hmm. Because you know why? Because today we fight wars only to replenish the inventory. What do you think the shit of giving all these towns and cities uh, free, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, guns and and, and M16s and big tanks and all this other crap all. So they can make new ones. The private contractors can make new weapons. That's why. That's what it's all about. That's what we have now. And people like, like the Dick Cheney's of the world can make another make fortune. Make another buck, baby. Another buck, baby. Yeah. What happens? If one of our aircraft is shot down or crashes in enemy territory, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what happens if ISIS threatens or actually beheads one of our pilots or advisors? What is our next move? Well, appar apparently it wasn't important enough to save those poor souls that were beheaded already. Does our president have a strategy for this? Or does he somehow think American air power is invincible? When will he understand that when we send American sons and daughters into harm's way, we are at war, and that we need to let our military do its job with every resource at its disposal? Go in it to win it. And that means absolutely nothing is off the table. What when about uh, early on in Iraq with Abu Ghraib and all this other crap? You know, with the torturing and everything? Yeah. Abu Ghraib. Well. That was in it to win it. Didn't work. Because we shouldn't have been in it in the first place. Well, after, after they were in it to win it, and after they claimed to have won it, that's when the uh, all the urban uh, warfare with Al Qaeda started. With the civilians, Al Qaeda dressed as civilians, and you know, and and, uh, and, and roadside bombings and uh, 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 suicide bombers, and all I that. will just say this: and kidnappings. There was no Al Qaeda in Iraq 
when Mr. Saddam Hussein was in charge. No, he kept he kept the clean Iraq. Yes. He had the Sunnis in power, but you know, I mean, he didn't he, tolerate. I mean, him and his else. son, him and his sons were not nice guys by, by any stretch of the imagination. But why did we send? Why did we uh, send over? Uh, uh, what the hell's his name now? Donald uh, Rumsfeld. Rumsfeld, back in the eighties, and sell him uh, the the gas that he gassed the Kurds with. The nerve, nerve gas? Yeah. Yeah, we sold it to him. Sold it to him. Yeah. Because the United States wanted to get rid of it. When you scratch the right. surface of all the shit in the world, you see the United States fingerprints. What does Jesse Ventura say? Follow the money trail? Follow the money. Follow the money trail. When? Oh, I read that already. If the writer holds the Bible as God's word, he may want to rethink his advice against choosing among his rules. Though most of them are highly commendable, there are a few one may wish to reject. For example, the rule about how to treat your slaves. Or the one that commands you to kill your children if they are disrespectful. Or the several that direct one to slay non-believers. Even the commandment of Jesus, who is far more reliable than the Old Testament God, has at least one rule that commands us to hate our family if we want to follow him. This rainbow to which the writer refers has a few unpleasant shades that mar the whole. Mm -hmm. Okay. The reason the George Washington Bridge issue won't disappear is because the record and New Jersey Democrats won't let it. Good. New Jersey is one of the most heavily taxed states in the country. And in many major cities, there are problems with crime, poverty, and corruption. The state itself wallows in crashing debts, partially due to pensions and benefits paid to its public sector unions. Oh, it couldn't be that they're not taxing the rich enough, could it? Yes, yeah, a lack of revenue from, from the rich that are not paying their fair share in taxes. Despite what the trolls say, that the rich are carrying the tax burden, which is bullshit. Yet, instead of hammering away at these issues, some of which had been caused by the Democratic-controlled legislature, and further exacerbated by Democratic mayors and city councils, the record newspaper continues to drone on about four days of traffic delays at the bridge. Maybe it's time the record moved on to something new. See how they want to give Mr. Christie a pass? Yeah. Yeah. Just like the second election, when they elected him for the second time. Yeah, after people were bitching and moaning about Chris Christie left and right, they still re-elected him. Yeah. Democrats, too. Democrats, too. Yowzer, yowzer. I was shocked, because Barbara Bono, she's a fireball. She was on fire, you know, and I really, um, I really can't picture why a Democrat would want to stab her in the back. You know, I mean,
I hear our bee population is in huge trouble. Big trouble. It's it's in worse trouble now than ever, and it's not a good thing. Big trouble, man. Governor Christie is unfit to be the Republican standard bearer in 2016 presidential election. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with the George Washington Bridge scandal. It's because he has stabbed his own party in the back three times. The first was when he fawned all over President Obama just before the 2012 election in order to get Sandy relief aid. Stronger than the storm. Yeah. When he opens his mouth, he's definitely stronger than the storm. He makes a storm. The, rack, the second was when he called a special election for the seat of the late Democratic Senator Frank Lautenberg instead of simply appointing a Republican. Democrat Cory Booker won, thus guaranteed that he wanted, wouldn't oppose Christie for governor last year. The third was when Christie who was head of the GOP Governor's Con Conference, would not immediately support Bob Astorino for governor of New York. Astorino is a corrupt crook! If you are a Republican, you cannot support a man who is trying to destroy you and your party. Right. Absolutely. I am no fan of Balloon Boy. Uh -huh. Chris, Krispy Kreme, Crisco, Christy. Not by any stretch of the imagination of my friend. Uh -huh. <coughs> <coughs> Having a high ragweed season. Sure. Uh, and now, we shall move on to a few of your favorites. Oh, here we have <laughs> Amy Dickinson. Amy, Amy Dickinson. My best friend of 35 years dated a guy for more than a year. More than 10 years. Recently, his ex found me online and we started chatting. It seems this could lead to a date. We are very attached to each other. Attracted, excuse me, to each other. Attached? Attracted. Attracted. However, my boyfriend's friend says that his ex is still his property. What? What? And that I can't date him property. or our friendship would end. Well, it's, it's, it's very awkward, but the word property should not be used. It, it's very awkward. You know, it's like if you have a, a best male friend, if you have a best buddy, and he absolutely breaks up with a girl, and then you say, well, can I date her? You know, Why like, would you have to ask? You shouldn't have to ask. Well, because you probably care. You might care about the, the male friendship. You might wanna you might wanna show respect. If, if your friend respect tells you for, yeah. that his ex is his property, you ain't got a friend anymore. No but no human being in this day and age should be anyone's property. A woman the woman is not his property. You know, if he's a that egomaniacal. Continuing with the yeah. letter, I say that's selfish and not very boyfriend friend like. What do you think? Should I go on a date with the ex and let the chips fall where they may? I'm not getting any younger. Or do as my boyfriend's friend wants and keep my distance from his ex. I would say unless the and. Listen, unless the ex, without a doubt, shows signs that she wants to date him, 
then it kind of takes to... I would assume so, that they are on that road already. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look, wait, in that situation, wait for her to give the signal that she wants to date, because then it'll take all the, the bullseye will come off his back and go more on hers. Uh, but some guys are, are nuts. Some guys blame everything on the other man. You know, it's like, it's like if you're at a restaurant with your wife or girlfriend and you know, and a man from another table is with his wife or girlfriend, and he's staring at your wife or girlfriend, and then the chick would get angry at, at the one, at the the wrong person, the other, you know. In other words, the man will think that you are provoking. It's it's like the deal with rape and, and the right wing. You know, they this crap, that they talk about is oh maybe the per the woman provoked the attack the unwanted attack maybe she was dressing inappropriately and all this stuff you know and it, it's the same thing you know Amy's answer Amy's answer I agree that your ex is being selfish and unreasonable the statute of limitations on dating his ex passed at the point he declared his ex to be his property. That is offensive. Property. At this point, you should do what you want and let the chips fall where they may, partly because your boyfriend's friend's refusal to let you pursue this relationship has already damaged your friendship. You may need new friends soon. But I hope you two can work this out. You should understand that he feels threatened. And if he has any legitimate reasons for you not to pursue this relationship other than the property defense, you should hear him out. He should be more generous and trusting. Toward you. Unless the guy is still carrying a torch for her and uh, in hopes that he'll get get back together with her, and that's why he's being jealous. But uh, if it's over, uh, mutually, it's over. Maybe the gentleman in question has something to hide because he didn't do well in that relationship. Well, for him to make the statement that the woman is his property, that shows his personality right there. Maybe he was very he, selfish in that yeah, relationship. And, and he's afraid that that person will tell the other person. All about him. All about him. Which will happen. Which will, Well, you shouldn't really talk about your past relationships with a new person, but... It'll, it'll get out eventually, and yeah, he has something to hide. I think you hit the nail on the head, uh, Dr. Bill. Ouch! I think you did. You know what they say. If you... If you are a hammer, everything looks like a nail to you. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> That's true. Uh, for every hole there's a peg, every peg there's a hole. But, uh, peg of my heart. Peg of my heart. <laughs> peg of, but um, but you understand what I was saying before. Yes. You know, I mean, uh, I've been in situations where I was with, at the time, I was with one of my exes. We were in a restaurant, and it was another couple. And uh, the other guy was staring at my ex. Now, I'm not, I'm not the insecure type to have that really bother me you know or if the woman I'm dating is having a neutral conversation with a male you know neutral I'm not saying you know flirtatious but a very platonic rela uh, conversation uh -huh. so he was looking at the, the girl I was with that I was uh, going steady with uh -huh. and his girlfriend or wife was getting pissed at mine 
uh-huh. at my uh, girlfriend at the time. Almost like she is encouraging her boyfriend or husband to do this. Uh-huh. No, he was uh-huh. doing it all on his own. Yeah. It's also similar to a man going out on the town and his girlfriend is dressed like a prostitute, Ooh. wearing cut off Daisy Duke shorts with a piece of her ass hanging out, mm-hmm. or showing too much cleavage and showing her belly and her hip bones or whatever. And he's getting upset because a lot of guys are looking at her. Well, hey, you know how your girlfriend is dressing before she leaves the house. You shouldn't get mad at men that gawk if your girlfriend is in her underwear. Well, yeah, the, the, you know what I mean. The, the old Daisy Duke, uh, yeah, this. Uh, to me, it's asking for trouble when a woman dresses like that. Usually young females do that. It's asking for nothing but trouble. Dear Abby. Dear Abby. I had suspicions my dad was cheating on my mom. Is that a song? Suspicion. Terry Stafford. (laughs) And when she found a mysterious earring in the house one day, I knew Uh I had to find the proof. I went into his iPad. And checked his email. Uh, so she let me guess. She had his password. Obviously. Or she was a hacker. She yeah. checked his Facebook and his IMs. Found he apparently has a girlfriend. You mean there was there was text that she might have found that uh, points to this. She works in his office and is also married with a family. Uh Uh-oh. Dad found out that I broke into his iPad. Which really wasn't nice. It's not nice to snoop into somebody's private matters. And he confronted me. Instead of apologizing for cheating on my mom, He told me I need to think about what I'm doing because I could be ruining a bunch of lives. Well, it's not just her parents' marriage, it's the other half too. He also... True, well... He also made me aware that my breaking into his iPad, I broke the law. I think I should tell my mom. It's because her, she doesn't deserve it. It's this. her mother. He, she's protecting her mother. But what, was he was he right? There's a law about breaking into somebody's, uh, hacking into well, somebody's. If they want to, pro- if they want to, pro- you know, prosecute. Yeah. yeah. Is it, I mean, it, it's not right to do that. I mean, it's like telling. Well, it's like telling a hater that he doesn't have a right to his opinion. Everybody has a right to their opinion. And everybody has... Ragweed. And everybody has a right to their... Below. And everybody has a right to their privacy. Unless it's the government snooping on you. Oh, then they're allowed to. Oh, yeah. That's correct. It's like the deal. If, you, if the government owes you money, don't hold your breath. If you owe the government money, they want it right away. Yeah. Oh, well, you just made me, something just popped into Sounds my like head. Sounds like Republicans. Something just popped into my head, another one of those... Um, tidbits? A uh, little tidbit against uh, the poor and the working, working poor and stuff. Isn't it funny how the working poor and the middle class have their taxes taken out of their paycheck but the rich don't oh yeah we do it out of doubt isn't that fun but the trolls keep on insisting the rich have the tax burden which is a lie 
you know. But no, it, 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 it's not fair but to, the point is that to the tax unemployment because it was taxed twice, technically. It's not fair to tax the minimum wage people. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm talking about withholding. They take your money and hold it for a year until you get your refund. They don't do that for the rich. The rich pay at the end of the year. They, they it's another one of those things, like for instance, they do here in New Jersey with what they call a home energy program, which pays you for your oil or your propane, the pool. Right. The pool. Right. Well, when they give you the money Lifeline. at the beginning of the year, yeah. or whenever, it's made out to you and your oil dealer. You cannot cash the check by yourself. They're worried that you're going to spend it on something else. Drugs, or booze, yeah. or whatever. They but that's not the issue. The issue is that they do not trust the poor the working poor and the middle class. But they do trust those the rich, rich bastards who get all the loopholes that they right. want See, the and need. The rich, they pay their taxes every quarter or annually. And it's all over and done with. That's a corporation. There's no the rich, withholding. The rich don't pay, number one, per se, income tax. Yeah. They pay other taxes. Like capital gains. Capital gains. Uh, estate taxes. Yeah, stuff Reagan like was that. bitching about yeah. capital gains taxes when he was they in office. They always do. They always do because that brings down their uh, 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 amount of right. money that they pay at, at the end of the now, year. Now, what is what is it with this? Uh, uh, a comment was left on the group uh, concerning a flat tax. And uh, yes, he said it was fair, or she said it was fair to that, all. It is not. I have proved it many times. He says that the rich will end up paying a lot more in taxes than the poor and middle class would have felt flat tax. It'll never happen. Like if it's 10%, let's say. Because as I've shown many times, 10% of a million dollars leaves the crumb bum on top 9 million. 10% taken out of somebody who's making 10,000 leaves 9,000. Where's the fairness? That doesn't sound... Where's the fairness there? That doesn't sound fair. Well, it ain't. So what you're saying is that the flat tax does not make uh, put the tax burden on the rich. Of course not. So uh, uh, the, the late, great Edward I. Koch of, of New York City, the former mayor, was right when he said that the flat tax will right now. only guarantee that the rich will not have the tax burden at all. Well, forever. Theoretically, they would have 10%. But with their loophole lawyers, they'd, they'd be less than that. For instance, right now, uh, their, their uh, tax is supposedly 39.6. Who's paying that? Yeah. Huh? Uh huh. Did what you McCullough pay that? What what what's his name? The one who was complaining that his secretary pays more taxes than he does. Tax rate, a higher tax rate than he does. He was only paying like fourteen or thirteen yeah. percent. Now, what about this uh, corporation? Pe They're people that mentioned the flat tax also mentioned consumption taxes. Consumption taxes, I, I always said, how many times? How many refrigerators do the rich buy? Yeah. So, so it does the same thing that the flat tax does. It ensures that the rich do not pay their fair share in taxes, period. Because the middle class and the poor buy more than they do. The 80% buy more than the 20%. Right. Okay? So with a consumption tax, they're going to be paying more taxes. Okay. There's only one fair way. It was put into effect, what, in 1913? The more you make, the more you pay! Yeah. What is so hard about that? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's very simple. 
it's, and of course people like Teddy Roosevelt and others understood that we have high taxes on the rich because we want to prevent exactly what the Koch brothers are doing right now. Uh huh. Corrupting the government. Yeah. Well, please leave a message under the gentleman uh, Nathan. The part, na man's name is Nathan. That left that. Uh, That'll be gone. It's gone now. Huh? What's gone? No, it's there. Where is it going to be? Group. It's gone. It's on the group. What Nathan said about uh, a flat tax will ensure that the tax burden will, will be on the rich. Uh, that the flat tax and consumption is the way to go. That is still there. It's on the group. Well, I'm not in the group. I'm in my William J. Eisenman page. Well, how do you think my you, stuff? How do you think you see all the activities? Because you're a member. They're of the on group. my page. Okay, I'll just. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I'll ask. A little brief question. A leading question. Right, yeah. and then you'll know where you'll you'll, you'll see it again. Yeah. Oh. I, I I I follow what you're saying. The flat tax was put forward by Mr. Forbes. Now you know Mr. Forbes. I, I remember. Is him. not going to put something forward that isn't going to benefit him and his ilk. I remember back in the day. Every time there was a presidential election. Forbes he was, or he got plenty of face time from the, from the media and he was, his thing was get rid of the IRS and uh, okay. in, install and the And then we tax. can put everything on a postcard. You know? Yeah. Consumption taxes. Uh, Bob Grant uh, used to blab about that too. Uh, no IRS, we need, we need a, just a consumption tax, that's it. And Forbes said flat tax or flat and consumption, which means that the little guy will be it's paying. It's just another way of broadening the base, like Reagan did. Yeah. Making those on the bottom pay more. Well, what, what Nathan That's was all. trying to say, that if you got Joe Sixpack paying 10% is, is a lot less than, let's say, Bill Gates paying 10%. Yes, the guy who has less money 10% he's going to be he's going to be out more money left over than the guy on top. Yeah, because temper let's say he only has $10,000 in the bank. I mean $10,000 income. In the bank. Income, income, income. Okay. All right. Don't don't be so Please. nitpicky. Income. I corrected myself. Let's say t his income is only 10 grand, which is way below the poverty line. 10% minus 10 grand leaves him minus 1 grand. I'm 10 sorry? percent of ten thousand is one grand. Is one grand, so he's left with nine thousand. Nine thousand. But Bill Gates, let's say he made a billion dollars in in 2014, which is not far fetched. And let's 10, say ten percent of a billion leaves nine hundred million. So so. Oh, he, I'm so poor. I'm so poor. I only have nine hundred million left of my billion dollars. It's not fair at all. No one should be looking at it except some ideological stupid jerk. Flat taxes. And the consumption tax does the same thing. You know the what I'll do? People on the bottom pay more. I, I usually, usually, I always post this show on the group. So when I post the show on the group, the, the video, I'll write on the bottom, uh, uh, I'll, uh, Nathan, this is where my co-host, William J. Eisman, explains that the flat tax and the consumption tax only helps the rich. And then, he'll have to either just answer on his own or watch the show. You know, but... He's probably answering just because that's what he heard. He's a, he, he's really a cool guy. You know? I mean, I mean, he's really he says a lot of progressive things on the group, but he just happened to say, based on what he was told or what he believes, is that the flat tax and consumption tax is the most fair tax. Now, even Gary No was for the flat tax at one time. I don't know how he feels now. 
you know and and Let's also Jesse Ventura is for a flat tax because well then there are these people that have not thought it through yeah. well these people also you know are are wealthy well there you go again <laughs> they're, they're progressive but they're still wealthy yeah you get that self-protecting mechanism big coming in there uh, you know? good old human nature you gotta love it human nature what once you you ever hear the story of uh well you, you even told me huh? uh, 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 uh baby boomers or hippies from the 60s they started out real liberal and then as soon as they got established and, and became a big in, shot yeah. working for some corporation and now they got money to burn then they turn conservative exactly. the haves all of a sudden once they have they don't care about what you have or what you don't have well they want it what do they want because they already got they want it. it all they want it all yes yes they well, want how, it all. How, how rich does a person need to be they need it all why because it's a sickness oh like the hoarders like the people that hoard junk in their house yes they and don't they, know the limit they, they, they don't know the limit they to what they can uh, handle they just can't throw away anything well, what about if it involves cats or dogs or something like that? You end you end up hurting the animal. Exactly. By the way. You, exactly. You act like somebody we know. You act compassionate and and show empathy for the cat because you are saving all of them. You are rescuing them. You know, maybe maybe it feeds their own ego for some reason. And but in the long run, when you have a house loaded with cats that you cannot properly care for all exactly. of them. It ends up hurting the animal. That's right. That's great, right. Great comparisons. All right, so finish that, uh, Abby. There is a saying, the best defense is a good offense. That's the playbook your father is following by trying to make you feel guilty for his transgression. Yeah, look at over there. Because your mother found another woman's jewelry in her home, she may already have a hunch that something is wrong. It is not your job to save anybody's marriage. Tell your mommy what you have discovered because her marriage is threatened and she deserves to know so she can decide well, how she wants to handle it. The daughter is doing it out of love for her mother and I can understand full well why she wants to tell her mother. I would protect mine. You know, I mean, uh, anybody, any man could be a father. It's a, it's a piece of cake. You just, you just a pollinator, a fertilizer. Whoa! There's, there's only one mother. You know, so. Stick it in, move it back and forth a couple of times and squirt. Move it in, move it out, <laughs> shove it in, round about, disco lady. Remember that old song? <laughs> move it in, move it out, shove it in. Yeah. Um, Oh, did you see that goofy um, uh, scientific clinical video about how to have sexual intercourse? I posted it on the... On the uh, I think I saw that a long time ago. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's, it had a, like a robotic automated voice. <laughs> it's, it's funny. It was very funny. But almost like the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the um, documentaries they used to show young people in the 1950s about how not to get a venereal disease you know it was they were hilarious yeah you know oh would you, oh would you like to go for an ice cream soda oh i think that'll be neato and swell let's go for an ice cream you know it was kind of like that real corny let us go to rot's hut and have a burger that that food is greasy as hell a lot of people love it but anyway uh, this one involves another cheating husband. Yeah. My husband of 34 years had an affair with a co-worker lasting for a year. He has had at least one other affair that I know of. Well, it takes two to tango, you know. The co-worker knew he was married. With the aid of a therapist, I confronted him. And he said the whole affair was a terrible idea. Yeah, his hormones took over. He was thinking with his uh, schlong. And that he wanted our marriage to stay together. <clears throat> he agreed to cut communication with the woman. She moved 
away. A year later, after working hard on my end to try to repair the marriage, I found out that the two of them had been having long weekly phone calls uh, oh. that my husband had gone to great lengths to conceal. Have they did the dirty deed? Done dirt cheap? I say that if he felt compelled to continue the calls, I would leave the marriage. Well, he shouldn't be calling her, but, but I'm saying, did he actually cheat as far as, you know, physical cheating? Fast forward one year. Okay. The calls have continued. Have continued. <laughs> My thing just blew away, folks. You mean the very reading? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Maybe Chris Christie's in the area. There he's, he is. Maybe he's, he blew everything off your table. The calls continued, in spite of repeated pledges by my husband that they were not occurring. Uh, yeah. I confronted the Scarlet Woman. Scarlet O'Hara? And told her to cut it out! He's a married man. He's my husband. Cut it out. Or you, I'd spill the beans to her husband. You homewrecker, you. I will rat on you to your husband. I don't blame her, you know. She these did. These people are married. Oh, oh, she did tell her the other woman's husband. She stopped the phone oh, call. She cease and desist. Here's the problem. Yeah. My husband has never apologized for his actions. He says if he is warm and loving, that should be enough for me. Oh, what about the vows that he took? And I should get over these events. Why do people bother to get married if they like don't want to honor the vows? My husband is pleasant enough, but is hardly warm and loving. He continues to have multiple phone numbers and multiple emails in his name. So he wants a harem. Scare him. I'm not accusing him of a uh, romancing women, but I feel insecure. If I try to bring up our relationship, my husband refuses to talk. He wants to play romancing the bone. Because he says all I do is tell him that he's a terrible person. Wait a minute. Is she, is she very, in general, is she very critical of him, putting him down a lot? Maybe he got... Re she says he no. He felt resentful. He said no? She says she no. She said no. See, we don't... Maybe he's... Maybe he feels... Um, uh, you know... Uh, he refuses to talk to a therapist. There's, there's got to be more to this story. You know, I mean, if somebody's constantly complaining and putting you down, and they're, they're, your spouse is doing this, you know... She said she was not doing that. She was not doing that? Because you, you got, it takes two to make the... It could be guilt upon his part, where he believes he's a terrible person. Because maybe he is a they, horrible person. They have to see a, 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 a licensed marriage counselor. He won't talk to a therapist. You won't talk to a therapist. Thank you. No. Sounds familiar. Well, it takes two people to save the marriage. It takes two people to uh, solve these problems, not just one. And if you don't want to see a therapist, then... Amy says... Not much you can do. I do have hope mainly for you. Your marriage? Question mark. Not so much. Your husband seems determined to deny you the healing and intimacy that you desire. Catching him, catching him again, and being proactive in driving off his mistress is pretty exhausting. You are expending all of the effort to keep your marriage going, he is passively letting you. 
Pleasant enough isn't a very high standard in a spouse. Pleasant enough isn't is the ultimate standard you set for your dental hygiene, it's not your husband. Reread your letter to me. Continue with your therapy. And then do what you want to do. That's pretty sound advice. But I just want to tell people out there, monogamy is very hard work. It takes two to make it work in every aspect of it. Uh, it doesn't help if one person is constantly being put down and criticized. Uh, it doesn't help when uh, one person, I'm not saying the woman always, but when one spouse gets very fat and, and, and uh, neglects their appearance, just because you're married to somebody and possibly had their children, doesn't mean you can let yourself go. It doesn't mean that they're always going to be turned on because out of the sheer fact that you're married to them and, and you, you had their children and, and you know, he's going to love you all the time and, and get turned on and it doesn't work that way. It's hard work. You got to keep yourself looking more enticing than if a single person were playing the field because you're with the same person every day and every night. So it requires more effort on your part. So it's hard work, you know. You don't let yourself go. You don't become like those uh, obese Walmart people that you see pictures of online. No, you stay just as attractive as you were when you met the guy and him too. I'm not saying it's all on the woman. The man should not be a slob either. Uh, so don't cry and go on, uh, uh, what the hell is his name, uh, 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 Bill Cunningham's show and Jerry Springer crying Who that, is Bill uh, Cunningham? He's, he's like Jerry Springer, okay. yeah, he's, don't go in there crying in, in front of national TV, <laughs> he cheated on me, <laughs> and, and they have the guy take a lie detector test and everything, meanwhile, a lot of those women are fat slobs. <laughs> He's the one that he don't want to bang you. Come on, wake up and smell the coffee or the uh, yerba mate or whatever you're drinking. It's unbelievable. Use a little logic. Think, think. Don't be a dunce, like Mario Petrus always says. Don't be an imbecile, a, a dunce, a Google. You know, use your brain. So anyway, that's it, right, Chief? Thank you for joining us for this week's Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth. We'll see you next time. Halloween is definitely in the air. You know, there's a new uh, program on, I posted on the food group, Everything is Food. It's called the Beer Geek. I saw it. It's, it's, uh, it's about uh, craft beer, and it looks like a great show. The host is, is real cool. Beer Whisperer. It's like the beer whisper, but a lot more sophisticated. Uh, Plus, the guy is not bombed out of his mind like the beer whisper. Like the beer whisper. Oh, I had to post the one when he did the, the show Naked. The Naked oh, Beer Jesus. Whisper. His, his big Buddha belly was hanging up. Yeah, that. yeah that was uh, Tom Mulvihill. Hmm. The Beer Whisper. Anyway, say so long to these jabronis. So long, jabroni people. This has been a Megalife 21 production.